We're live now. So the topic is why Michael didn't get his homework done. <laughs> there we go. And I have to give ownership for this. So we were talking last weekend. Boy, it'd be nice this summer for Michael to do some sort of internship. Oh, we should sort of casually look around. So we casually looked around on the Kirkwood website and we found three possible internships. I'm like, oh, so on went Tuesday. You went to, oh no, it was Thursday. Yeah, it was Thursday. Uh, so I turned it about on Wednesday and on Thursday, he went in and I'm like, oh, between classes, why don't you go find the office and talk to them about these? Well, that morning while he was in class, I was doing a little bit more reading. And I realized that the deadline to apply with everything in for those was Friday at 3 p.m. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and of course, you know, Michael didn't have his phone on because he's a good boy. He's in class. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm madly funny because there's no <laughs> optional. <laughs> and it requires reprioritization. Recommendations and it requires. So, Everything is in except what the teacher recommendation because the the, he, the only for teacher he was going to see was his physics professor who says sure I'll do that and Michael I think he basically said yeah I know it's a little late I need to stay <laughs> <laughs> but he did not get the email to tell him to where to uh, so they're still messing around with that but they're going to accept it once it yeah. so. Yeah, but, but you want to show us that? That was your homework. You want to show us the application? Oh, I'll show you no, 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 no. <laughs> you, do the presentation, record it on Loom, share it on the channel. <laughs> I suppose that's legit. It, it's my fault because the time he would normally be using to do that. Well, so. and the, the homework that I promised to be closer to Monday than Thursday than Friday, it really depends which solar system you're in. <laughs> they think it came from Thursday night, right? <laughs> we did get this place to meet in, though. That I thought was a major win. <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm realizing it's hard for me. The the videos aren't getting many views, so I did like this week. I did go in and and edit out the part where um where I had accidentally typed part of one of my throwaway passwords. <laughs> As a login name, it's like, oh yeah, I gotta get rid of that. But there is, I know there's one part where I'm saying something, and it, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna edit that out. And as I was going fast through, I heard that part. Oh, I'm gonna edit that out. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I did try to make one kind of monologue-y part where I was trying to figure out how to do something. I tried to make it. I, I put it on like four X, and I put a big block of text on there that said, if you really want to hear this, you go two X, you can understand it or I'm sorry, half X, you can understand it. 0.25 if you want to hear it, and it's originally real-time gory glory. And oh, I, th I put that in the channel, didn't I? And I, I, you know, I was today years old. It doesn't work like that. It's, you know, it it's even worse now on YouTube. So, <laughs> but um, they don't get a lot of views, but I know that sometimes, you know, I've even had times where I want to go back and say, you know, what, what did somebody say about how to do X that I didn't know how to do or... And um, I'm thinking that maybe the thing I need to do is make sure I attach a transcript to it so that you can search the transcript, right? Yeah. But um, but when I throw a VTT file in there, like I said, it likes to put the text on the screen. So what I need to see if I put a VTT file on there and mute it, you know, so it doesn't show up, um, does it still include the text on YouTube? And if it does that, then like I won't, it'll be really fast. I can just include the VTT, leave all my idiot ramblings in there, and just post the thing, which maybe takes like a out. secret setting when you upload a video where you can upload captions too. But I don't know. Yeah, actually, you're right. There's a captions. There's a captions box. I can. Yeah. I just saw that after you have to wait until after the video processes, which is you know. I forgot and left one of them at 4K this week. That was. 12 hours of joy or whatever it was waiting for that to process. But except I knew then Friday and then put it off and put it off until Friday after the gym when I got home at at, at, at 10 that I that I should really do it like oh whatever it's probably not not that big of a deal. Crap, I need to see my faces. I'm not doing this. <laughs> so, 
Mm. Uh-huh. I'd give you a reference. You I've know, done that I'll before. Be, yeah, sure, but but like I needed like like two references in in, in a span of like five hours. That's funny. Okay. Well, right, four or five. Sometimes, some well, places. Well, one of them has to be a teacher. Yeah, yeah some of them. Great. Some of places they yeah. make you log in like with your educator credentials, and but there are some places that just you know I, I've given students from this program just PDFs, right? That they can present, and if you want one of those, just let me. Know. You old students. Um, so, anywho, your your, your yeah. homework is installing. I don't even know what that means. Um, My homework is I rebooted and I stuck rebooted. I went into hell um, for, Waiting for, for the in. long thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I went into That's reboot. Weird. Well, I went to, into the in, installer shell. And I can kick it again. Does it do that? Uh, oh, wait, it works. Like, oh, you're installing a new instance? Yeah. Rather yeah. than trying to recover? Okay. Wait. Did you do any? It's, it's, I didn't know about that. I didn't all over it. Did you get the first part done? The part to just get SSH running configured? What did you get done? Tell me that. Did you do Frogger? There was a Frogger level. There was the Padawan level. And there was the Leroy Jenkins level. Why did I choose to call it the Leroy Jenkins level? We'll get back to you later. We have a Leroy Jenkins bot on Slack at work. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, what, no, what did you do? Um, I looked for all the like GitHub stuff and I was just trying to find a way out. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, do you have an SSH server available? Or yes or no? That's okay either way. Just wondering. That's okay. Nobody has anything available right now. I've been hearing, hey, let's do more interactive stuff. But this is on you. <laughs> Axel. Um, Hello. Hey, it's two words, IP adder. Uh, um, yeah. It's not a patter. If, otherwise, you'd hear me say a patter. That's why I do weird things like that, so I can remember how many words they are. Okay, time out in the room. Benevolent dictator. We have a, we have somebody else here. Axel. Remember Axel? Hello. That's a big about you before we started the meeting, saying things like you were, what was the word? Existent. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I asked them to prove it. Definitely. We're going to give you the chance right now. Um, did you get any homework done? Or I know you've been like probably crumpled over sick this week. So what um, what did you get done or not get done? I managed to get Padawan done and record the meeting notes. <laughs> cool. All right. So you got pad one done. Do you want to, um, since since these guys are whatever they are this week, <laughs> do you want to show us the part you did? And then I can, I will demo the Google Authenticator stuff after that. Uh, sure. You don't, yeah, if you don't mind. Hey, guys, let's, let's pay attention. And you'll need, can you share? I'm uh, sure yeah, I'm, I'm working yeah. on that. I have too many desktops. Ah, there it is. I will stop. I think we can share at the same time, but um, it's harder that way. I'm going to put him on Jumbotron. Well, that's... The screen defaults to three hundred percent scale. It's it's four K like a normal monitor, <laughs> and wow! Except that it can go to an actual four at the front. But if it does that, it 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 trims the ends of the screen, so it's thirty whatever that kind of four K. I can put it a hundred percent if you'd like. <laughs> Give you binoculars. Yeah, that would be really, really hard to see. Did you know you can you can uh, mouse wheel zoom to scroll? So, whoops. Right. Just in case. Is it it's working? Skill. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna start by starting SSH. Ah. That should work. Yeah. 
He's just not right. He didn't see do it. But Ubuntu is Fair. so nice. Look what it did. And my address is that one, right? Yep. Okay. So then I'm going to SSH to 144.76.90.88. Oh, and I forgot. Yeah, you need a username. Yep. Uh, there it is. It wants me to unlock the nice. private key. Nice. So let me go grab that from my notes here. Um, nice. Message of the day scripture. Wait, how do you even get that for, for um, terminal? Well, you can run MO, something like MOTD or anything in your bash RC. And then every it's time a it custom script I wrote. It's on GitHub. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. The everything is on GitHub. Ah, there it is. Okay. And so, and what's happening here in case it's not clear, when he, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but when he created his, um, when he ran SSH keygen, he, when it said, ask, you know, ask for a passphrase, yeah. and I've been going doink, doink, and not having one, yeah. he created one. Yeah. So, yes. Lost. So it's asking, it's he's protected his key, which is, you know, a great idea for competition, perhaps. So now um, that I've entered the password right, I can unlock mm -hmm. the key. And I'm in. The boom, nice. So, so instead of instead of supplying a password for the user, you got one for the um, for the key. This makes me wonder. I've never oh. thought about this, but but I wonder if you could shut off password off on Linux for that user, like give them a big star in in Etsy Shadow. Never thought about it. That would be interesting. The only way you can connect is with the. Uh, Oh, keep here. So uh, now I have, um, you can see I'm logged in through SSH right there. No. What's W? Uh, it's oh, you ran, what, I'm sorry. I think? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's like a form of who or who is or who am I? Yeah. There's so many, so many variations. Who's logged in? That. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see I'm logged in from my IP address as myself. So it's and, working. And it's very good. Cool. Nice. And okay. of course, you know, there's the SSH keys and everything in the SSH folder. Right. And this is where it gets a little confusing because you're, as the client, you're holding the public and the private key, it, and you're sending the public key to the server, which is then checking in the exact same directory, right? So um, that's, but yeah, it, it works just the same. Yeah. Yep. Anything else you you learned or you know stumbled upon that you thought was interesting? Well, if you remember last meeting, I could not log in because I forgot the password. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting how easily you can get into single user mode. Yeah, the first time you see that, I think a lot of people's first reaction is panic. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Luckily, I encrypt my disk on my main machine, but still, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. It is. The, um, there's a great hack on Windows for this too um, that I could maybe show you sometime. But you know, there's the there's the accessibility icon on the Windows login screen. I haven't tried this in recent version of Windows, but it worked for a long time. You could in your operating system find the there's you know there's a 
app or a DLL or an executable gets launched when you push that little accessibility icon, you could replace that. You know, you could with the same name, you could replace that name. What am I trying to say? Suppose that that thing is called accessibility.exe. You could delete it and then copy command.exe onto that same name. And so then when you press the accessibility button, you got a, you got a shell. And so if you didn't know your password, you could just reset it there. <laughs> it, it was insecure. But, <laughs> um, but what it let you do was like you could, um, it, it was a way, there, there's a way you could use that to, if you had a, a separately bootable copy of Windows, even if the disk was secured, if you could mount the disk, and there's the there's the thing again, right? Encrypt your disk. If you could mount the disk, it's kind of game over. But that was a shortcut. You know, if it's your disk, you're still going to have to do all this stuff to get back to it. Well, no. If you have, you know, it was a shortcut. If you got a Windows disk, you can just do this: change your password and reboot. So it was a shortcut using all legitimately granted permissions, but it was a very nice shortcut way to prevent it. Mm. Encrypt the disk. So. I, I loved it. I thought it was so cool. Hey, Dad, I, I did a security upgrade to your computer. Watch this. <laughs> okay. So, excuse me. you said you're looking around and stuff. Did you bump into anything you thought was interesting about anything to the SSH? Go down any rabbit holes that were like totally unrelated or? <laughs> um. It doesn't matter what it was. The team has lots of people, and that's you know part of the strength to go different directions. Uh, there's a couple things I can't remember right now. I'm looking at okay, it's all pressure. Don't worry. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about you guys? Any random observation? Well, <laughs> any, but at any time of the week, did anything pop into your head, possibly, or or anything you're working on? Um. We we'll kind of know. We can pr probably kind of read Tristan's mind about root passwords, <laughs> and, <Yeah. laughs> and you kind of you sort of walked us through what your discussion with Henry was about. Was there anything else you guys thought of, or you did? Okay. Well, if you think of something, oh, wait no. for a pause. Oh, go for it. Um, okay. <laughs> And they already had a storage array. So, so I'm working on deploying a utility server almost on it, which which um has it's basically like so far I've built my own custom uh quote unquote FTP server that um that that uses the, the storage array. Um well it it the the quote unquote FT, um, FTP server uh creates or uses an existing data directory. However, um, every single file that it stores in the uh, in the in, in its directory is fully encrypted. And then then it sends it decrypted, but naturally because the the session will be encrypted as well. I'm not, I'm not too concerned. Hmm. Basically just like deploying random crap that that I might need on my Raspberry Pi. Nice. So you're doing, you said the session's encrypted. Are you doing FTP inside of an SSH? No, no, SSL no, or? no, no, I'm doing it like what I call the forehead way. I'm literally like de de decrypting the <laughs> entire file and sending the contents of the file over. Okay. Text by text. The forehead. Way. Yeah, the forehead way. <laughs> In <laughs> no, 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 it's a reference. Imagine yeah. a guy smashing, a, smashing his forehead through a wall instead of like, Fixing the problem, mm -hmm. just just send the entire file over a connection. And yeah. Then After you write it all, you should look at SFTP libraries or F FTPs, whichever one's yeah. good, and just just see Maybe. compare the implementations. And uh, I always like doing it longhand first because it gives you an appreciation of what you don't have to do. The second time. True. You know, but that's how you learn. That's how you understand what's going on, right? Always do it. Like my son Andrew, who said, I want to build logic circuits on this breadboard, but I am not going to look to, I'm not going to look anything up on the internet. I'm That's just going to, I got wires, <laughs> I've got a breadboard, and and he's not a technical guy. He was just curious. <laughs> I'm like, cool. And he did it. 
Right? Oh, hang on. Hey, John. Um, no, but we can't really hear it here. I could tell one of them was like in the in an electrical or. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that'll help me. Cool. I'll look for that box. Thanks. Bye. That was that was the yeah one of the two people I texted who is still going. Does is it bugging yet? Here's how to shut it off. Shut off the noise, not the alarm. Right. Okay. Swap two still up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Swap we are two. still in the crosshairs. Okay. John messaged, who's John? Message my group. Oh, he's. You can shout also in Messenger. That's faster support than Iowa State. Okay, and, oh, I was, and I was that impressed. That wouldn't be hard. Well, <laughs> well, when Ice Age was down, you know, they it, we didn't get to use it, but they had it back up when our meeting was over, oh, right, right, right okay. afterwards, which was yeah. a lot better yeah. than other years. Yeah, um, you know, it comes down to individuals, right? Because it's students and right. and whatnot. Okay, so let me. Normally, Ice Age refers to the geological timeline. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and it, and it's ice rink. I think. Oh, okay. I, ice age sounds so cool, and ice rink just doesn't. I um, sometimes I just don't. I just say ice age, but they're technically they're different things. But let me. Um, I'm going to show this to you in virtual box. Oh, one thing about this network, which you want to know for two entirely different reasons, is that while this is a guest network, you know the whole mission of this place is like, well, it's a cooperative. So there's the boundaries between these organizations is fuzzy to me because they're all working on similar projects and sharing space and real cooperative hey, but be, but because it's a its mission focuses a lot on k-12 education and they have people come here to do code, code or dojos and whatever we they do not have guest isolation on this network so i had two hmm. laptops with me yesterday and i could like ssh from one to the other very huh. different from you know godaddy's Yes, security is draconian like it needs to be, right? So so there's two things you need to know. One is that we can see each other and the other is that they can see us. <laughs> yeah. So it, the, this is a little bit complicated for me. I'm, I'm conflicted. Do I treat it like a public Wi-Fi and, and therefore Windows blocks everybody? Or do I treat it like, yeah. like um, a network I trust so that we can hit each other? <laughs> I brought my... My switch and and map everybody in the building. Yeah, remember, <laughs> remember Mars. My my my. Yeah. yeah, I brought that in yesterday and and tried several of the of the ports here, but not all of them. And the ones I tried were not active. I'll talk to them to see if any of them are, because that would that would solve it. We'd still be on their their internet, which um, is actually pretty fast and very symmetric. Like sitting here, I got like hundred high hundreds, but oh. the but the upload was fast. Well, if you're having problems on updates you're in oh. Iowa state right yeah, yeah so exactly. um but yeah it was high hundreds but the upload speed was faster than downloads they have a business deal where it's symmetric right not like at home where you get a million down and two up right so um yeah so it's very nice um but, but i'll find out but for so now the real okay. question is do you trust the network yeah and um well like i said that's that's the question we don't have guest isolation. And for us, that's a really good thing in terms of the fluidity of the class and what we can do. And the question is, do I trust the hardening of my own laptop on a on a guest network that has that? It is an isolated guest network to this building. And they their programs have a degree of you know control, but their programs also have a lot of K-12 students. <laughs> um, 
I trust the network kind of to the degree I trust you guys. And I mean, I trust you guys more. So, I mean, there's, you, you understand what I'm saying. I'm, I'm a little conflicted about how to do this, but I was like, oh, cool. When I saw that I could get from one machine to the other, I tried pinging my business, my work laptop and it responded. And I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> so for what it's worth, I'm going to start... HD config. I'm going to start my a virtual machine Halo, and um, once it gets going, I'll pop it onto Jumbotron. I'll share. I'll share that screen again. Right now, it says um, it's going to take a minute seventeen to start it, and done. Okay. <laughs> it did not take a minute seventeen. First time I saw that, it's going to take how long? Yeah, and then it was like, just kidding. Whoops. I love this in, in Power Toys, this multi-zone thing that they have, and you can configure it. It's one of the things that Linux people are very jealous of. It comes basically comes with Windows, and you can carve up a big screen almost however you want. Let me make this bigger. Oh. Terminal. So I would like to make that font a little okay. bigger. On the plus side, I've already got a background. Oh, is this not going to work now? Yay. I might have to share my other screen. Maybe yeah, we do my other screen, Aaron. Yeah. Thanks, I forgot. whole thing deadish not the right size either okay I can I think one moment. Let's just check that. I don't know if that has to do with the if it has to do with Jumbotron or if, or if it's something else. Hang on. I'm gonna find out. Right there. See these these are the highlights that will no longer be cut out of the videos. Hard reset, Hard. huh? Yeah. I've got a snapshot of exactly where that was, actually. So if the reset doesn't work, I'm not concerned. I love virtualization. <laughs> Not, so this is one. I want to switch this around. Cool. This doesn't work. I'll just pull it back to my um, laptop screen and figure this out some other day. Okay. Okay, I have a username, Little Bobby Page. What? <laughs> Bobby Yeah, that's not. Uh... That's good. Yep. Oh, the, the log, mouse. The log cabin. Yeah. So the the keyboard's working, but the mouse is not. Is it keep That's a very good thought. 
Let's Probably check that out. We shouldn't be doing it because it's shit out of work. Nice. USB. And <laughs> oh, yeah. this one. <laughs> That's weird. Good call. Is your trackpad works? The trackpad works now with my. Yeah, usually you can like use it with both, right? Yeah. Does the trackpad work? Yeah. But does it work? Do I work with the trackpad? That's the <laughs> question. Okay. I so, cannot use a trackpad. But my problem with trackpads is that, well, you guys, you've heard this, I twitch, right? So um, I, nothing I can do about that, but I can use the trackpad. Okay. I'm going to. That. Oh, I usually use it. Oh, there. How about that? Isn't installing drivers on Linux amazing? There we go. Uh, this is just a. <clears throat> this is fixed now. This was just a uh, Windows versus um, virtual box problem. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Will this work now? <laughs> that even works. Work. All right. Okay. So this is payload. Oh, yeah. Payload. System yeah. cuddle. Status. I don't even know if I have this installed. Do I? I do. It's running. Um, and that's that's very good. And so, I believe that where I've left this right now is is what I think the. I better do this. Let's just be more efficient, right? This isn't. I try not to do this at work too much. Or I'll just turn myself into root for now. Do no dash i. Time time matters more than than best practice sometimes with yeah. with this group, right? So, um, so we'll do this. I'm going to look at Etsy SSH SSHD config SHDH uh, yes. memories of go. scrolling through SSHD configuration file, trying to understand what every single what every yeah. single option is. So what I've done is I put the file back the way it was, right? And I've just put a little comments in here that says, these are the things we talked about. Oh, I added one, but these are the things we talked about modifying. So um, let me do this, go back to the top. So the first one was that listen address. I don't know what my listen address is, so we'll go get it. When in doubt, just use 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Yeah, but yeah, in this case, since we're showing I, I look so for inet in this, in this output just because I know that's the yeah. easy way. Yeah, plus it's actually a much better idea to actually use a secure practice um, in, yeah. instead of just slapping 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 on it. You should actually like designate it to a make. Yeah, this, this matters a lot. Like in, in clustered computers, I have servers that have three addresses bound to them. Exactly, yeah. The heartbeat one has no business having access to a service like this because yeah. there's a service, a heartbeat, that'll just say, you there? Yeah, you there? Yeah, because exactly. it's checking if this partner is still alive. Yeah. It doesn't need something like SSH. Ooh. Well, actually, so with that Dino, if they if, if they set up another NIC and then set up a subnet or if it's like like, uh, like like a completely different address like it's a completely private subnet but that doesn't okay. mean that yeah. it can't be compromised so you, you still least least privilege least access least yeah. attack surface awesome. so you try to make a subnet that's just big enough for those two ips exactly. but it doesn't mean yeah. that somebody can't knock yeah. that yeah. knock that one of those nodes out and take the other ip yeah. and say yeah i'm here right yeah yeah, it wouldn't be man in the middle, but it'd be I'm not that man. Exactly. <laughs> so so we'll do this. Okay. That's my IP. Exactly, you got it. This one we said permit root login. We would change, and they have prohibit password, which means and that's as a suggestion. That would mean that if you use root, you're going to have to use some cryptological, you know, certificate, which is possible in addition to pair um, key pairs. We want to use key pairs. So anyway, we want to say no. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. I did. Root login. C letter. Modify. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get rid of that. 
And I apologize for using Vim. Sorry, not sorry. It's that kind of thing. Um, Honestly, I've been addicted to Vim as well. I go back to Nano. It's like, oh, this is terrible. When I use Nano, I wind up with J J J J K K K K all over the place. <laughs> I forget. I don't. I don't look up. It's like, oh, whoa. How do I undo? I don't know how to do that either. So, it's just muscle memory of an old guy. Yeah. No, it's that's legit. So, and then the other thing is X11 forwarding is fun. And if we have more time, I'd show you this, but so X11 is is the, um, and Ox will point out that it's being superseded by this thing called Wayland. And I don't know, Axel, do you know, does X11 forwarding work with Wayland? Uh, you can't you forward, know? that would be Wayland forwarding. It's a different protocol. So I presume no. Okay. I didn't know if there was a Wayland forwarding um setting but anyway with x11 the original thing that draws you know the the gnome desktop that we're using um, you can actually x11 terminology is just wrong um i think the word is cursed um <laughs> in any normal reasonable and sane server and client situation the client is the thing that makes a request for a for a resource and the server responds and supplies the resource. Everybody with me so far? Because yeah. I'm about to mess up your whole life. Um, with X11, with X11, the server that you're connecting to is the thing that has the screen you want to use. What do you mean by, by screen? Just stop with what do you mean? <laughs> oh, okay. Basically, <laughs> So you would think, because you're going to put things on your screen, that you might be the client. Yeah. But no, you have this X Windows thing running on your screen that is receiving. <laughs> and you request a program to run on the server, yeah. and the server sends you stuff back that you can put on your screen. And so technically, yeah, you're requesting the X eyes, the thing that runs little googly eyes and follows your mouse around on the screen. Simple example, or X clock, or that's super messy. Or so it's they... just counterintuitive, but you're requesting that this thing runs on the other computer and that it sends you screen instructions back. And that's what so, you as a client consume so and you put sends, it on your screen. That, so it basically sends you the GUI for the program, sends but, you but the, physically it's runs running the program on the server. Yep. And so the server, so messed up. The, the server paradigm makes sense because you're requesting something to run on exactly. the server, it's but the client up. interface, that's what, that's the confusing part. Yeah. What you think of as the client interface shows up on your, pro, on your exactly. computer. That's what X11 forwarding does. We really don't need that. Cool. <laughs> so that's why I suggest let's change that to no. Um, it's cute. It's fun. It, it's something everybody should do in their lifetime, and you should you and and you should do it with X eyes and watch it follow your mouse around the screen. <laughs> and it's and it's useful. I mean, you can run serious programs that way. You can run uh, there's there's an astronomy program I've run that way uh, for planning observing sessions, and it doesn't have to be just stupid things like X eyes. Which sounds like a tax situation, doesn't it? But, it totally does. Actually. Would you rather so that, have a thousand servers or a thousand clients? I'd rather have a thousand clients, but I'm not going to be able to run my astronomy program for a thousand clients. It's just, I mean, I'm, I'm basically running it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a confusing thing. So, so it's and it's kind of deprecated. Physical server. Like virtual servers, they think it's a physical server. Then, then, then just create virtual servers running it's, on that uh, physical. Server. It's any server, and it's serving up program execution. It's kind of like it's very, very analogous to connecting to an RDP session. Yeah. If the RDP session is configured to run one program for you, which you can do. So you already yeah. you set you get an RDP and the RDP is configured to run um uh Word's a bad example, but yeah. you, you don't they don't install Word for Not you because they have a 
there's a thousand employees, but they have 50 licenses because they figured out that's how many people use Word at a time, and you have to RDP to use it, use one of the 50 licenses. That makes sense. So, um, then I don't even think that's a legal licensing configuration, <laughs> but um, you know that that kind of thing. It's a lot like that because then you're looking at it on your screen. RDP, you can even hide the RDP mechanisms, and it looks like it's on your screen. That's what X Windows is. That's what X forwarding is like. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's just easier to understand in in RDP because we're used to thinking exactly of, that's a yeah. server. Or, yeah, it just we, confuses we are people. Fully connecting yeah. to that, and when the graphical displays on my screen, it's yeah. displaying on the server screen, and it's sending it to me. But no. Okay, so um, like outsourcing the back end. System cuddle. We start SSH. So when I do this, I have another user, so that this will um, be a little easier to see. I thought I moved my shoot my, my um, physically my my screens are reversed. I have to go right to get to the one on the left. And it's messing me. <laughs> Um, I can do this from Windows, but I'm going to do it from Ubuntu in case I need to help the man page or something. It's just easier for me. Uh, so I've got little Bobby tables. And let's make sure this connectivity thing is still working. If I ping payload, it's there. Payload.local. This happened, by the way, if you think way back to that, how the internet works, DHCP, right? We, we showed up. We don't know anything about the network. If you look back at that diagram sometime, which actually it's on GitHub, right? So why not look at it? It won't take long. Go right to go left. It's like what Lightning McQueen said, steer right. To, yeah. No, um, that was not Doc Holliday. Yeah, or whatever his uh -huh. name was. He taught him that, right? Oh, uh, so, Hudson Orange. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Dot and Doc Hudson, I think. Yeah, yeah. his official name was. Um, that movie, like, literally was my childhood. I I love that movie, and I still do. Oh yeah, I watch it like every single like every single week at at least once for like a couple months straight. <laughs> I still watch it every night. We have the oh, <laughs> we have the DVD, and when the first time we got that DVD, it was like every week. Every oh day. yeah, every yeah. Day. all right, guys. It's kind of small, but it's the yellow arrow, right? And I'll just mm -hmm. read the box. But this first decision box, the very first one is, do I have an IP address? We showed up, and the answer was no. Yellow arrow follows no to a DHCP server, and that's the guy who sends back a request a response that says, here's an IP address. Um, so that was the very first thing on our how does the internet work diagram. And so what happened was, in the case of Palo, their domain name is .local, which I've used, I used to use in production on database servers until I found out that's a reserved domain. You're not supposed to use it. It yeah, had some legitimate that, use. That Yeah, I discovered that via yeah. somebody telling me uh, I, to not use that. That might, have been, that might have been me when I found out that I yeah, shouldn't be using actually it. Been, yeah. So, and then they assigned this IP address, gave it a subnet, and... Um, when I, you know, when when my uh, laptop showed up, they did the same thing for me, wound up on the same subnet. Notice that it's slash 20. Remember the, the normal ones are 8, 16, 24. So that the network app, there's a good reason for that. So, so the idea is that if it's slash 8, then the 172, anything on 172 is the same network. That's the first eight bits. If it's slash 16, then it's 172.26. If it's slash 24, it'd be 172, 26, 206. Anything matching that would be the same network. This is slash 20. I'm going to have to think about this. Um, the 128 is part of 206 because it's smaller than 206. The easiest way to think about it. Then you have to subtract the 128. Young people, help me. And um, 128 and 64 is smaller than 206. That's 192. And uh, But anyway, whatever the first four bits of 206 are, that counts as part of the network oh, the address. Oh, two bits. No, it'd be the first four because 16 yeah. plus four. So 192 is two. Um, then you add 32 and you get 220. No, it's too big. So it's 
it's 172.26.192, but it doesn't really help you visually. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Right? True. You have to do the or anding. So anything you and with 172.26.192.0, if you get out 172.26.192.0, it's on the same network. And that's why our addresses can look pretty different. Yeah. Right? 251.66. It's easier to just go for it and look at it yeah. in binary because otherwise it gets really complex thinking about like like uh splitting the number two oh six in half and then using half of it for the nipple and half of it for that. Yeah. yeah. So here's it's the uh two fifty one. Um that's their uh their address. No, oh, but I was wrong about this. If it's all ones, two five one. Are we on the same subnet? They might be routing us. I think they're routing us because this doesn't, because yeah, mine's mine's not going to be. We're well, on different subnets. That well, means they, well, they, they would have been given sixteen. No. Whoops. Which would actually make a lot of sense. No, hang on. Here. Thanks. Oh, yeah, true, because there's also a phrase path six. And then N. Sometimes it's N for numbers. Sometimes it's D for digits. Mm. It so it's so oh, the yes. important thing I'm trying to show here, Tristan Hangman, yeah. is that we're not on the same subnet. It's having to go. Mm. It's trying. It's having to hop. Okay, yeah. so I was wrong when I said that. Those are on two different networks. That's the yeah. point. Okay, moving I on. I just learned about that. Okay, so back to this. Um, I've got Bobby. Um, user ID is Bobby, full name, little Bobby tables. I got Bobby at Palo. I can say dot local if I want to. I might have to add some other parameters depending on how many uh, key pairs I've got sitting around. I've cleared everything out, so this is new. Bobby's password is little tables. Bobby, little tables. And there he is, Bobby at payload. Okay. So this is new. So does Bobby, I don't think Bobby even has an SSH directory. He does not. So we'll make one. Now I'm going to exit and go back. Next is, thing. Is SSH installed on that? Oh, duh. I think so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. So now let's. Um, it just wasn't uh, installed on, on the user Bobby. So therefore, he would have had no SSH directory to be by default. Yep. So now I'm going to do this is like an accelerator walkthrough, right? And we're going to get to Google Authenticator. So let's, um, yeah, let's get there. SSH keygen. And um, um, Axel did this right with the password, but I'm. Trying to you know make sure we get there. SSH key gen. Where do I want to say, save it? I'm going to say home Chris um, dot SSH, and I'm I'm going to call this little Bobby, not little Booby. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I'm surprised I didn't I caught that. So little Bobby tables. We'll do that. I'm not going to give a key phrase. You guys can. I should have mentioned this, but you guys please play along. That's the point when I do things. Now I'm too far yeah. ahead. Pretty. I didn't. Yeah. Didn't have. You can do it with your with the same user. If oh, yeah. that's a good that's question, though. If you want, if you need to create another user, here's we haven't talked about this. Here's a way to do that. Yeah, it's there's a there's two commands. One is called add user, and one is called user add. It is very confusing. Um, and I think the one I used to create Bobby was user add. Is there a big yeah. <laughs> oh, Bobby, I'll, let me. Um, no, that's going to be confusing if I do that. Bill both. Okay, that's that's not the right one. <laughs> okay, use add user. One or two names. So use that user, give it a name, and it will it will walk you through just a little bit 
because Baggins, bad passwords, short of the name characters, Baggins is no good. Um, Bilbo oh, is precious, <laughs> it's precious, eight. nice. It's like okay. new yeah. passwords. Hang on. It lets you type any password. It just tells you they're bad. Okay. The name, full name. Mom, just kidding. I don't know. It doesn't. You put anything there, and then I usually just go bang, bang, bang through those. Uh oh. Impact Oh, probably. Oh, not. It's already okay. So anyway, he's still there. It was a bad, bad example, but so yeah. Use if you try, if you try um, the wrong one, it'll just work. Change if you try user add, it'll just work, and you're like, uh, I don't like that. Change user add to user Dell. Do it again, and then that's how. That's literally how I remember it. And then go the other way. Say add user. If you have the graphical thing available, do it. You can do it in the GUI. If you're not comfy yet finding this command, so that's that's how I create new users. Is add user. It's that's not the and that's that's not the organization level way to do it, but it's plenty good for what we're doing. Yeah. I'm not I'm not you know, also typically cheating the, you out the, of anything. The organization wide way to do it and use the um, active directory. So or well, well sometimes yeah or yeah it does sometimes. or Kerberos or, which is yeah. the same almost. Let me my um terminal duck behind that. There we go. So now I have this key key pair look in um dot ssh make sure it's there there it is i was like where'd it go so that long thing that says c learner go to eddie and because i expected this one to be the long thing i don't always read so good um and now since i know scp since i know ssh works that means i can scp because yeah. cp that's just cp inside an ssh, SSH tunnel FTP yeah or whatever copy yeah so i can say SCP and I can grab um, dot SSH slash uh, little Bobby tables dot pub. Yeah. It's okay if I say it that way. Never move your pub, your private key anywhere ever. And then I then you do it just like you're you're doing SSH. So I'll say Bobby. Whoops, Sabi. Bobby at Bobby Wasabi. Palo like dot local. It. And then you have to specify where to put it. That's what's different. And you do that first with a colon, and then you give it the path. I think you can do things like, I want to use my home directory, like you would, but I never rely on that, so I don't know. So I'm going to say home, Bobby, and I'm going to stop there so that I know it'll work. Wait, all right. And then I'm going to SSH key gen. Okay. Enter okay. file in which the same key is. Is it first public? Hang on just a sec. Um, oh. I'm going to, I'm going to stop and put it right there because even though I'm going to be Bobby and I can put it anywhere, Bobby can use a file, uh, can write a file. Remember SSH directory at that SSH is locked down. Um, Bobby can't write into that directory unless he messes with permissions. Okay. So I'm going to just put it there. Um, I think that'll work. Password is little tables. And that's what it looks like when it works. 100% is the key thing there, no errors. Um, Tristan, answer to your question is you're providing the name of the private key. And you yeah. can tell that from the example they give you. It just says ID underscore RSA, no dot pub. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I'm used to naming my keys. Private is dot key, public is, is either dot C-E-R or mm. um, because typically it is actually a search right. or or just dot, dot pub. Yep. Good point. So now, now I'm going to follow that back with uh, another SSH to get back to the other machine. I just typically how you do it. Um, and you're going to say uh, little tables. Okay. So now I'm here. There's my little Bobby tables dot pub, right? And inside dot SSH, I got nothing. Oh, and it's not locked down yet. I forgot that. But here's the thing, you, sometimes I forget and I do this into that SSH. Now that's in there. And I go and lock down the permissions and everything. 
and I go try to log in and it doesn't work and I can't remember why. Why not? If I if I do then yeah. okay, so I move it in there. Um, whoops, I forgot the L. I've got it like this. I say, oh, those permissions are wrong, and I change uh, change little Bobby tables to be read only, which is four hundred four for R, and then nobody gets anything else. Which 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 would make sense. And now I've got this right. So I've locked down the file. And I go back over and I try to use certs to get back in, and this won't work. Why not? Because the permissions allow only Bobby to to, to read it, not like SSH when they're when they're, when they're actually read, reading the key. That's a good train of thought. I like the way you're thinking, but it's going. This is the right permissions. Really, it's the correct permission. Something else about it is wrong. I'm going to set the directory to its correct permissions. By the way, also which is. Bobby can do stuff and nobody else can. So now it looks like this. And those are the correct permissions. The directory is robux 0, 0, and the file is rrr, 0, 0. Hmm. Hmm? Is it the name of it? It is the name of it. Okay. You don't, this would mean that Bobby possesses a public cert, a public key, with, right? Yeah. What you have to do is wink wink at the uh, SSH so that it gets out its decoder ring properly. The file that this goes in is a file called authorized keys. Mm -hmm. Remember, So the normal way to do this, I'm going to move that back up here, you know, wherever it is. So the normal way to do this, wherever you copy this file over to, is to take it and say, I want to copy little Bobby tables into the last line of, um, no, not, not copy, sorry. I want to concatenate little Bobby tables onto the last line, onto the end of um, authorized keys inside SSH. Ooh. And this will work because Bobby tables can write to that directory. Right? But you always have to check and make sure, you know, what, what what permissions did it get? And it's like, ah, I got the wrong one. So now this is too open. SSH won't use this because, you know, there's another, there's a group that can write to this thing. I don't actually know what the minimum, what the correct, you know, maximum permissions are that this thing can have. But authorized keys, um, I just always, I just always set everything in here to 400 except for one file. And the one that I don't set to 400 isn't here yet. It's, um, um, shoot, what is it? I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a minute. Known hosts, because known hosts, when you log in and you say, yeah, this is an okay, I know I'm connected to the right machine and I know I haven't been here before, or or it got moved, you know, it got migrated to new hardware, and so the signature changed or whatever. And you say yes, it writes a line to known hosts so that it won't prompt you again. And if that one's four hundred, it'll just prompt you every time you log in because it won't be able to write that line. You know, if it's four hundred, or if you specifically turn the setting wrong, I want mm -hmm. yeah, oh, like the like a big option. Oops, right. Yeah. Same thing. Okay, so back to this. So this should work with, um, I should be able to log in with using, uh, with my key now, even though there's, there's no key here for Bobby tables, it's in the authorized keys file. That's where it needs to be. So I'll exit out of here. And I don't have many certificates here, but I have some, uh, let's see. Is this me? Yeah. Oh, this isn't my work laptop. Yeah, my work laptop probably has 35 keys in it. Yeah. And the problem with that is this. I'm going to turn on, I always forget, verbose mode. And I'm going to log in as Bobby, try to log in as Bobby at Palo 1132. Let's see what happens. Ha, LS. 
know, it, it is harder than I expect some days to do two things at once. Okay. So I want to look at this stuff up here. This is verbose mode. So what happens is it's reading my config file, which doesn't exist. I hope to remember to show you this. And it doesn't find any config, it doesn't find this config file. Maybe it's there, but if it does, there's nothing in it that will help us. It looks for a config file in a predetermined place, and Etsy doesn't find that one. Um, it keeps going. It starts looking for identity files, which are um, certificates or um, private keys. And it, it'll find IDRSA. It's looking for some predefined. That's why it suggests IDRSA when you run um, SSH keygen, because it's one of the sort of hard-coded ones that it looks like. And for whichever ones it finds, it will try them. It should try them. Come on. Um, oh, and here's where it's looking. It finds this. Um, it finds this EDS, EDS, ECDSA, whatever. It finds the fingerprint for this computer in known host, so it didn't prompt us, right? So you can see when that happens. And then it says, okay, I'm going to try this IDRSA that I found. I'm sending over its SHA-256. And um, it's like, yeah, that didn't work. And the problem is, let's see, does it ever get to trying? It didn't try little bobby tables. Okay, I thought it might iterate through the directory and try them all, but it didn't. And um, so maybe by default, it only tries the, the ones, maybe when we set other settings, it'll dig through and, and, and kind of try them all. But the problem is that if I tell it, hey, I prefer um, key pair authentication at work, It'll, it's got 35 or whatever to choose from, but what's our max auth retries? It's Almost like six. six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, 16% of my my uh, cert attempts will work and the other 84% yeah. will just fail, you know, on average. Yeah. So, so something you can do, and I'll, um, this didn't work, right? We want to use cert, so I'll say no. So one thing you can do, is to pass in a dash i. This stands for identity file. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can just say, hey, this is in my .ssh folder. And it's called little bobby tables. <clears throat> and the, the autocomplete knows enough to remember what I can never remember. Do I put .pub on here or not? Notice it left the space. It's not even giving me the choice. I, otherwise, I'd be like, I'm going to have to try this twice. Yeah. So I think this will work. Yeah. Yep, there we go. So once I told it which which um, key pair to use, it's like fine. This this works, and let's um, let's do that without the debug going because that makes it look like it was torturous, right? If I do this, it just looks like that. Yeah, exactly. it just jumps right to the session. Nice and slick, smooth, simple. Nice and slick. So let's nice let's slick. go and look back at. Um, I bet Bobby can't do this. Bobby shouldn't be able to do this. So let's let's not try to have Bobby do this. Let's go back to VM virtual box, excuse me. And we've got root over here. And let's let's change our um okay, dude. No, let's not do this. You don't if you're an SSH client, you're not able to do stuff on the server side. And so let's look at let's look at that config file. That got mentioned a minute ago. Uh, do I have one? I hope I have one because okay. Let, let me get a like. Um, oh, do I have one in my backup? Nope. So let's ask Google about this. Left and right thing is just killing me. Sorry. <clears throat> SSH config file example. Isn't it in Etsy? No, this is one for the for me as an SSH client. 
to tell SSH how to use my um, crypto files so that I don't have to use that dash I ever. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, that's no. <laughs> no. This is for beginners. I don't, they show the beginners. Here we go. And it's not something you can copy. It's not text, it's a, it's an image. <laughs> oh, here's one. It's commented out, host, forward agent, password off, enabled. Ciphers, none of this is right, hang on. Well, no, I, I just mean none of it is what I want, right? The, the host and host name, that's good. I just want one that has a... Uh, Example, private key. Well, that's large. Um, there, can, how can I store my private key in this? Well, you can't store the key, but I think I know what they mean. Anybody see this one, right? Identity file. That's all we want. Okay. That's all we need right there. And so we're going to, Axel, you might, if you've read about the, uh, the, the config file in Etsy, I don't know a lot about that. So maybe I think we're gonna run our full time here, but you know, maybe you could look at that and post some of its uses because I think there'd be some I think that's like default is that default settings for users do you know usually configs in Etsy or user um, are put as the default config and then they're overridden by stuff in your home directory. Yeah, so I would assume that's what that is, but um, SSH config, or should I start Windows, Linux, SSH underscore config, I got the name. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on this thing in Vim called set paste, because if you don't do that, um, Vim sometimes auto indents, and that's that can be bad. You post a whole bunch of text and it just cascades to the right as you go down. So that's what the paste mode is for. Um, and what we want to do, the idea is for this host file. You can say, well, or for the host argument here, you can put any name you want in here, but I'm going to say this is payload.local. So whenever I say payload.local, um, I don't need to supply a host name. But, well, but I will. How's that? I'll just say I'm not changing the host name. Still use payload.local as the host, but you can map it to something else. So I could say, if I say, if I just say gh, I want that to go to github.com. Right, so you can put shortcuts or aliases in there. It's very useful. Like if I had different certs for different repositories on GitHub, I could put the repository name in there. And so if I'm if I'm SSHing to one repository, if I'm using GitHub to get to one repository, it would know to use a different cert. I'm sorry, a different key pair. Um, user, oops. And here we'll say user um, Bobby, and then. This is where I can say identity file is um, little Bobby tables. And when I do this, this is just part of the SSH stack. It's going to see this. It'll look in the config file every time I do SSH. And so I'll say um, Bobby at um, payload.local. 
and it should just go straight through. Password. Oh, there's a reason for that. Um, what do I have to do? <clears throat> this is not something you um, prefer. There's another setting I'm missing here. Did you indent your config correctly? Yeah, I think, do I have to do that? I think I might. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, I believe so. Your example wasn't indented, so I was hoping. I don't have to use actual tabs, do I? Because I might break out in a, in a rash if I have to use tabs. <laughs> we'll see if this works. Okay, this is a puzzlement, but that's okay. Here, let's let me move on to the next piece because this might be related actually. Um, I'm going to look at at um, the SSHD file, and there's another file we're going to get involved in just a second. 11:43 is our time. Um, I want to look at Etsy SSH SSHD config again. I hate type the same typo. Um, I think there should be one that I didn't change yet. Is that correct? Oh, how about this one? Hub key authentication. That would be good. Yes. That, that's yeah. reasonable. I ran into that issue as well. Like, but, why is it not using my public key? Oh, that's why. So we'll say we want to enable that. And later there might be something we have to turn off, password off. I didn't expect that. So let's let's just this isn't what I was going to do, but let's let's um see if that actually makes a different restart. This is HD. Because that might have been the issue. I like how the tab still says Bobby at Palo. It's very optimistic. No? Okay, there's an option you can put on this line telling it you want to use um, that you want to use um, private keys. To disable tunneled. Just shut off stuff that has passwords in it. He's paying. I think that's all of them. Forgot to read, so hang on. Okay. I didn't have this trouble last time. So I did something and didn't pay attention last time and didn't comment it either. It starts. I do have yet one more idea about this. Oh, well, that's 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 good. We've made progress. Yeah, progress. Yes, progress. Permission denied. Public key. So I've got. Um, yeah, <laughs> ls dash um, dash l. Let's make sure I'm in. I'm in the right user here. We've got little Bobby tables, and hopefully I didn't, uh, well, let's see if I say dash I. So it, it's, oh, duh. What was I even? Stage little, okay, I did this completely wrong. I tried to put that in on the end of an LS command. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, so something's wrong with my config file, which I was not intending to look at today. So let's just walk away from that for a bit. Um, this should not be necessary, but there's a chance that the next thing I'm going to show you is going to fix that because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. Well, no, I, wait, I can do this next part. Um, the next part I actually want to do is Bobby. So I want to do Google Authenticator, right? This is interesting. And um, I think we need to cogitate about, can we do this for our, the green team? Would it be advantageous? And how would we set it up for them? Yeah, would we have yeah. one, one secret for all of their, you know, for everybody to use? How would we do that? And then we, and then we give them, you know, here's my phone for the day. <laughs> Generate your yeah. codes this way and then give me my phone back. You know, how would we do, do we give them, I've got an old phone. I've got a one plus phone that I, we could literally give them for the day. And the red team could not get it. The secret would be on that phone, right? Just a thought. So, so here's the deal. Um, how do we do this? Oh, they just need it for SSH, right? Keep the red team off from next. How's the red team going to do that? They could get the password and there's no way they could log in. Because they run, because they have to, to SS, because their availability check runs everything with 15 minutes and it's an automated session and, and it attempts but to. But it has its own system. user, right? This is enabled per user. Let me show you. So, um, so you start off, I, I might have this installed already, but you start off in apt and you search for Google Authent. I think it's, they all have dashes, right? Dashes. Oh, hang on. I think that is definitely right, but this would probably find it too. Okay, libpan, Google Authenticator, it's installed, okay? So we've already got it installed, but you just install that. It's a small installation. Let's make sure this, whoa, um, that's large. Okay, well, I don't know why VirtualBox is dropping all those files, but they're they're current, so I'm not gonna get rid of them. Well, well, but there's it's, no- It's a dot .kid file. Yeah, for services. That are for, it's I don't know it's wrong. Apparently the services yeah. are running as me. I'm not going to worry about it though. It's yeah. not a real. Sure. Um, so there's no Google Authenticator file here. Here's what you do: you run Google Authenticator. Are you with me so far? And it says, "Do you want authentication tokens to be time based?" And the answer is yes. This is just like any other. You guys, you guys use. A, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes, the ones where you don't get an email because ah, and they don't send it to your phone because ah, those are the two easiest things to compromise in the world that aren't a political party. And, and so you say, yes, time-based. And then it gives you a really large <laughs> QR code, um, which, you know, you can get, if if you're not on Jumbotron, it's, it's huge, but it's scannable, okay? But we don't want... The, we don't want that. We want this, okay? Because we want to save that someplace incredibly secure, like not not on Ice Age. We put it. We all put it in our personal password vault or something. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that right now. Well, lucky you. I'm following along, and mine cannot copy remotely, so I so I have to manually type out the whole thing. Yeah, you are lucky. I can send you this one. Just, oh, but that won't help on yours. Anyway, hang on. Let me pull up. Oh, <laughs> not there. Let me pull up what I use for my, what I typically use for my TOTPs, time-based one-time passwords, YubiKey. So because I have that code, I can say, hey, I want to add one. I want to add it manually. And this is why you want the code because, so I have, I'll even tell you which ones. I have one password where I store all my passwords. It's a very good product. Then I have Bitwarden, and that, that's where I store my one-time password codes because they shouldn't be stored in the same place, right? 
that, that defeats the purpose yeah. of the OTP code. And so I can now store this code in Bitwarden. And if my UB keys go bad or something and I and I lose, you know, and all of a sudden I don't have OTP, I can go set it up again because I've got this code and I don't get locked out of the service. Make sense? So now I can, or I can set it up, I get a new UB key I, and I want them all to have the same account so I can set it up on my new UB key so it has it also. So I'm going to do this. I always require touch, otherwise it'll just display it for you. And that just seems wrong to me. Um, what is, oh, I have to give it a name. This is um, LBT, Little Bobby Tables. I don't actually use cryptic names. I feel dirty about that already. And then I'll save it. And then it'll this thing will alphabetize it. There's LBT, I'll double click it. Got to touch whichever UB key is lit up. Well, that's how you back up those, those uh, in case you lose. Yeah, you just keep everything you do, you put it on the other one. So Wait, seven. Is that like a fingerprint? It's just a touch device. And then you come over here, oh. paste it in. And this is how it verifies that you got it right because you have to give it a code that works. Okay. And these are backup codes that you're supposed to copy. You've probably seen this on other services. Here's backup codes if you don't have access to your key, but you have access to your I got wherever same, you store I, this. I I got like like the same screen, except if I just typed in like negative one because I skipped it. Yeah, so you still get the backup codes. Yeah. yeah. However, and and so it. now it's gonna save information to this protected file. Now Linux is weird compared to Windows, it freaks people out, but Linux really relies on file permissions. Your web Web configs will be, you know, configured as four zero zero or seven zero, even seven zero zero, relying on the fact that only the owner can get to this thing. You really have to secure the account. So I'm going to save this, and then it's going to ask me some questions. These are important to me. Do you want to allow multiple uses of the same auth token? So you generate a number. Do you want it to be able to use twice inside that thirty seconds? I don't. So do I want to because I just don't. I can wait 30 seconds to make my box more secure. So do I do I want to disallow multiple uses of the same number? Yes, I do. By default, a new token is generated every 30 seconds in order to compensate for possible time skew, right? Because there's the servers aren't exactly in sync. Um, Kerberos requires a certain amount of synchronization, but it's not exact. So in order to compensate for that, the default is that they allow you to present what they think is the current token, the previous one, or the next one. That's the default. It gives you basically a 90-second window. They can allow you what sounds terrible, 17, what is it, seven, uh, eight previous ones, the current one, or the eight next ones, which just sounds like eternity to me, but it adds up to four minutes. Do you want to do that? I don't want to do that. So I say no. I always take, I'm trying to take the more secure ones. If the computer you're logging into isn't hardened against brute force login attacks, you can allow rate limiting so that people can only try three times every 30 seconds. If my computer is hardened, I still want to apply rate limiting. Do you want to enable rate limiting? Yes. And that's done. Now I have, in the midst of all of these things, there's a Google Authenticator file. Its permissions are 400. I can read it as the owner payload. Nobody else can do anything. It has nothing to do with Google. It has nothing to do with root, right? It's just me running a program and producing a file that looks like this. There's my, there's my emergency codes. I verified that I can put one in there and it works. So... <laughs> If you have a favorite number, a favorite seven, six digit numbers, you can put them in there. Crying out loud, don't put in all ones or something, right? One, but, one, 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 one. Yeah, I put in my favorite six digit number and it worked. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, wow. It, it comes from math and it's not a constant you probably know, but I, it's a transcendental number. But, <laughs> and I spell it wrong. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's it. And now Google Authenticator will work with this account. But to make this work, this is a this is this works with Pam. For years, Pam was like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't have to do anything with Pam because it's opaque and I have no idea what it's doing. 
PAM stands for Pluggable Authentication Module. So it's this thing that helps you log in and you can plug other things into it. You're getting to see this. Google is going to be plugged into PAM. PAM's going to use this module we just configured. That's it. That's all. So I'm going to now edit Etsy PAM.D. There's a config directory for PAM that now has, because we installed Google Authenticator. Um, well, no, I'm sorry. Because we're running SSH, it can modify how SSHD does authentication. So we go in here and we look for my initials. <laughs> um, there I am. We comment out, include common auth. I'm thinking that includes passwords for SSHD. That's my hope. But maybe the maybe it'll start to use my my key pair. But uh, if it doesn't, we'll still get we'll still get Google auth because whoops because down at the bottom, C Leonard add for Google Authenticator. There's this line. It's just in the docs, right? I can mm -hmm. I can require Pam Google Authenticator so so being shared object in in Linux or any Nix. It's the equivalent, basically, of a DLL in Windows. It's a shared library of code. They have this null OK, which I'm going to turn on. But look at the description. It's so that if you don't have 2FA, you can log in and do what we just did, setting up Google Authenticator. But if so if you have null OK on, you can use it to protect your own account. But as a sysadmin, you're not protecting the whole system, right? So we would we would probably have to do this to let in that that um, thing that's doing checks, right, and giving us green points. Yeah. What we would have to figure out is can we enforce it for all the other accounts? Yeah, exactly. So there's there's some research to do here. I just figured out how to make it run, and it wasn't that hard. Um, it is eleven fifty nine. My dad said he would be here around like twelve thirty ish. Oh, but, okay. Um, if anybody else needs to leave, please. thanks. So the question is, will this work? Um, <laughs> we start SSHD. Boom. So now let's go back to this guy. Let's see what happens if we just try again. I'm already logged in as Bobby. Let's. So now let's get rid of this and just see what happens. Okay. So I, I still have my config files wrong. That's. So do this. Oh, 13 updates. What is, what is wrong? Shoot. Hang on. Maybe it's it's allowing your public key and basically bypassing uh, Google, Google Authenticator because the public key worked. Let's go. Let's try this. I might have a snapshot where this is working. Um, there, And I might be able to pass some config information to SSH to say, hey, I want this to run. But um, let me try one thing before I go to another snapshot. And that would be, let's go into PAM and let's get rid of that null OK thing. Does this make it mandatory? I don't know. I really like this to work because it's really nice when it does for reasons that really become clear when it works. Uh, what am I missing? Um, try dash V on the SSH. Yeah, thing. let's do that. I've heard, I have heard you say that a couple of times. Authenticated to yeah yeah you're right there. Authentication succeeded via via public key. Yeah, but it's supposed to be sent another challenge by Pam after that. So maybe let's try maybe. let's try a couple of things. Let's yeah. Server accepts key. Yeah, and it and it should. It should accept the key and, and then it should challenge based on Google Authenticator. Um it's worth looking into. Yeah. Then well, let me first get rid of SSH. Let's just remove that. I don't think, wait, I'm still logged in. I think this will change anything. If I do this, 
It works. Yeah, it's so good. If I do this, actually, this could be interesting. Public. I wonder if I allowed. Hmm, if I allowed pass. Let's let me um, let's try this. I still have. Okay, let's do what you said, Tristan. Let's. You said something about let's enable or what did you say? Suggest as a config. Where is that? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, that's that's definitely, I didn't um, adequately comment this. I did roll back, though. I had a, I had this all working, and then I, oh. wait, read only file. Am I root, though? No, I'm Bobby. Look at the top. Yeah, I need to go over here. <laughs> um Yeah, that's definitely wrong. Thank you. I need to put a Vim profile on here. I keep having to type the same things. Yeah. And my actual Vim config is really nice. It looks so much better. It's got menus I can pop up. See, if it breaks, yeah, whatever. Okay. If this doesn't work, I'm going to take a snapshot of this and go back to a previous snapshot. And if that doesn't work, that's a cool room, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'll get it working and I'll I'll post the config files yeah. and I'll show a little video of it. Because the cool thing of it is um, you know, the only thing it'll prompt you for is your if you've protected your key file, it'll ask you for that. It'll prompt you for the Google auth, yes. and that's it. And if you don't have your key file protected, it just asks for the Google auth, and you get in. And yeah. it's still pretty secure. Yeah, which is like like a really, really slick option. Um, yeah, because, you know, because the, the key's changing all the time. Yep. That's okay. Right. There's my mouse. Okay. That one. There okay. We there we go. And I have to go get this back. Right. Right. There we go. So little Bobby tables, double click it, tap my key. That automatically pastes or copies it to my. Yeah. Come here, paste it. It's transparent. Oh, no, it's not. Wait, wrong, wrong. Wrong window. Oh, well, yeah, it was actually. Yeah. Uh, go left to get right. Go right to get left. There we go. It is transparent. Oh, I. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so that's still working. That's weird. So th there is some little config thing I got going on, maybe. This time, let's um, let's just do, you know, let's just memorize this six-digit thing and type it in. 894025. 894025. Yeah, so it, it has something to do with the certs still. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, so what I'm guessing would be happening um, was it's sending a cert and then and then naturally challenging that response with a verification code. It's sending another cert that is challenging that one with a with a verification code every single time, whether whether or not the cert fails or succeeds. Yeah. So. Why can't I? 
It's not going to let me take a snapshot right now when I'm running. There we go. So I'm going to take a snapshot just so you can watch. I'm going to take a snapshot called um, uh, Google Auth plus um, key pairs broken. The thing that's disappointing to me about this demo is this, the key pairs are the easy part that I've done a million times. Ooh. And that's the part that's broken. <laughs> Google Auth is much easier um, than you might expect. And that's what I wanted you to see. It's just not hard to set up. I'm gonna roll back to, looks like I have to like, kill the machine. Do you guys have time for me to restore this one and see what happens? Um, my ride is here. Yeah. So I've got maybe, actually I'm not entirely certain, but not all that much time. Okay. We gotta restore this one. Didn't need to do that. Go start. Cool thing about these snapshots is that for a lot of them, like after you create the first one, the files are all like delta files. Here we go, minute 15 remaining. And um and so it just has to capture the delta from the last time you took a snapshot. And if you want to roll back, it just throws the delta away. And after the first snapshot, it becomes very fast. OK, who do I have for users this time? Oh, it's doing that again. I think it has to wake up. Oof, I still got Bobby. So um, let's just see what happens if I I try to connect this button. As the, without Google off, so. Yeah. There's a Google Authenticator there. Really? Yeah. Pretty suspicious. Ooh. Nice colors. Well, we can. Like I said, this is on a spiffy web page I've got. I'm going to do this, pull this up, and we're going to search for the word. Oh, we don't have to. It's recent. I was going to search for the word properly because this URL is how to SSH properly. No. <laughs> I posted this. So install Google Authenticator. Um, Lupin, yeah, we, we did that. The user can just run that command and do everything we did manually. Configure PAM, auth required PAM. So we've got that, right? No OK at the end. Red Hat, Debian, we have to comment out, include common auth, which we did. For SSHD, we have to change no to yes for challenge response auth, which we did. Oh, we also need to set acceptable do 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 do. That I don't think I did. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just forget to hit tab. Hmm. That I see is case insensitive, by the way. Set ignore case. Okay. That makes um, sense. And the weird kind of structure of how that it's just a vimism, right? It's a it's idiomatic in vim. Set this, set that, set ignore this, set that up, set okay. yeah. Um And go 
I'm going to fix that before next week. Lay out of my mind. So it's authentication methods. Actually, by default, in there. It looked like it. That would, that would explain why I didn't see it, but I'm scanning for it. <laughs> Does it say we have to add this? Adding this line to the end of the file. All of a sudden, that sounds familiar. <laughs> oh, jeez. Pasted nothing. It's just like I'm on Ice Age. <laughs> I think I did something that cleared the paste buffer. Isn't it though? It's super. Oh, it's not working. It's so. Yeah, so help me out here. So. Authentication methods, public key, comma, keyboard interactive. Um, what happens here? It's, it's not. It's not inserting. It's not. It's just not. <laughs> it says insert, but it's not inserting. <laughs> You hit something that made it say read only. There. Yeah, yeah, okay. Why is it not in? Is it acceptable? Now it's been a long time. Oh, no, no. Authentication methods. Just authentication methods? Yep. Yep. Space and then public key, keyboard. Uh, well, public key. Yeah. Just public key like that? Uh, uh, public uh, capital K key. No, no, no dash. Cable case. Okay. And then comma, uh, comma keyboard dash interactive. Uh, no space. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No space in in, in between. Public key and you guys. Let's we'll take a look here. Thanks. I think so it's public I key. I don't think there was a big K. I don't remember saying yeah. key. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, everything sounds familiar to my uh, my phonetic capitalization. Um, so public keys all one word keyboard right? authentication methods plural. So now we'll now we'll be sure. Um, So I think that's it, right? System cuddle. Configuration file error. Because control product C system cuddle. Yeah, oh, that's the wrong. That means it had a retry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we don't have we don't have the actual error message. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 Let's see exactly what kind of error we're looking at here. Stop. And disable the method keyboard interactive and uh -oh. authentication methods. Cannot be satisfied by enable all methods. This isn't. It, keyboard interactive is um disabled method keyboard is disabled, is disabled something else. Oh, it's it's it must be disabled somewhere else. Yep, that's exactly All right. Were said to know. That didn't be right. Well that keyboard is interactive is different than it could be it. Let's find out. Um yeah, yeah, we'll see. sure. I'm just taking a stab there. 
That's a pretty good sound. Let's see. Set. Oh, wait. <laughs> Undo. Oh, wait. Publish key. Publish key. <laughs> Publish key. Um, Publish key. And then we want to see. That's, remember we had to turn this on for Pam before I reset, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. General response authentication. So now it restarted. Teamwork. Um, change since editing, load file. Doesn't matter, we're quitting. Sage middle. Whoa, oh, I didn't. Um, oh, yeah, that will try every single cert for public key in there. I think that the cert that's over there doesn't match the one, it's a, it's a rolled back. Oh, yeah, that's true. It is. So, um, what do we need to do now? This now. Well, team, what do we there, need? There might be another option in there to basically like, like, I'm, whenever um, I use dash V, I always see a, see a bunch of keys I, I did not generate. But that it's trying. Yeah, but um, here's so, that, here I think what's going on might be that. Thought maybe we shut off passwords. So I think at the time when I snapshotted this, um, I had little Bobby's private and public keys in on my client. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh, there's another thought, though. I have more than one Ubuntu over here. Did I use this one? It's purple. That's eggplant, baby. Um, yeah, maybe. That's harsh. <laughs> So I can, so I can get in here. I could take the keys over. I'll, I'll have to figure this out. My apologies. Right. It's very cool when it works, <laughs> but it's yeah, it's something so it's something we're thinking. Of. It's funny because I'm I'm messing up the part that we covered last week, right? That <laughs> <laughs> that was it could be a quick, not a quick, but I thought it would be an end to end walkthrough. Um, so I was hoping it'd be like okay, and this is it. We're done with SSH, but maybe we're not. Well, <laughs> But yeah, I'm really. Bold of you to assume that SSH will ever work on the first try. It's the easy one. What did I goof up? All right. Well, first, I have to take a whiz. And then I All right. have to leave. So where well, is the bathroom? I don't you know. Go out, um, turn to the right and we'll be right, right there. Actually, did you pass the drinking fountain? Yeah. Look behind you. I'll speak. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Is there... And you're saying that we can eventually say to like maybe we get a picture of us when we're at the competition. Oh, and yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Do a little write up and send it to them to say thank you. Yeah, that because like there's that's a little thing, but that group yeah. over there is from Six City or Rapid City or someplace. They're very large and purple. But, they are very large. But yeah, they, they put stuff like that up. Okay. And there's some other stuff in the hallways. So that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it? If you, I don't know if it, 
there's a power cord that doesn't reach, but if you plug it, if you pick it up and plug it in, it's supposed to it's supposed to work. Uh, hey, when I was talking to you this week about if you want, I was wondering if if you want to stay late sometimes, I don't know if you have other things to do, but we can start looking at like do you not do you use PHP? Not really. I don't know if you want to like me to put them. If you want to start looking at PHP, we can get a little bit ahead on, you know, there's going to be an app server. And if we had PHP, we, we had it last year, right? Yeah. Uh, Did you have it the year before? When it, when it was all Windows, they might have still had PHP. I, unless they had code behind with C sharp or something like that. Don't remember anything. What about the international one? I don't know. Uh, but it's it's not uncommon. And we can I just thought we could start looking at if, if you want. I yeah, I got ten minutes to my dad's here. Oh but I just thought yeah. if you wanted because when we work together like old school things, and I thought but you know you said you wouldn't be good from here. Not from a lot of that yet. And if, if you're interested, we can yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, check with your parents if you can stay after Saturdays. Yeah, I think that I'd be happy to do that. We can learn PHP together or Python Django framework, which is very cool. That's what um, Zulip is written. Oh, right. really? Yeah. Huh. Well, they have different. I, if you look at their architecture page, they show you exactly what they do. They use. I heard um, that Django is going out of style. I've heard that for a long time. <laughs> I um yeah, it's not like it's not like a premium web framework, it seems like. But yeah. but would you have guessed when I heard Zulip was written in Django, I was like, really? Because <laughs> you know? a YouTuber in Python. I don't know that. But you know, I saw Zulip, I was like, everything about this looks modern enough and you know, yeah. and it seems responsive and but Django is their main framework. They they use PostgreSQL, you know, a relational database. They, they do use in-memory databases, RabbitMQ and Redis, but that's for queuing. So. Did, uh, did you shut down Zoom? No, we're still oh, recording. Hold on. Hold on. Um, uh, I'm currently writing a guide for how to use Vim. Would you oh, like that? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen here. Oh, and then oh, could you merge my pull request? The one for uh, the Vim one? No, for the audio recording. Yeah, I didn't see that one, but I'll I'll look at it. All right. It sound like you had notes from last week. I'll I'll take a look. I didn't see any pull requests last time I looked, so sorry if I missed them. I I um. I don't get, I, I do get GitHub notifications every day, but I get a whole bunch at work and um, I don't always see them because these look just like those. <laughs> Isn't Markdown nice? 